not be crazy. If people were together, it would be a whole lot easier, but there's not. We already know that until <clears throat> Jesus comes back. In the millennial reign, it's going to be right. In the millennial, millennial reign, there won't be no Republicans, there won't be no Democrats, there won't be any independents. It's going to be Jesus. And I can't wait for that day to happen. Right now, my people, don't say this with me. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. That's what we need in America again. Put that flag back up beside that cross. It's so awesome. This is much bigger than politics. We are called. We are in a crisis as a nation. We need God to intervene. No matter our political viewpoint, let us join together and let us seek God. Also, Israel of the world. Power surge. Power surge. Okay. I thought I did it. Get it here. There we go. What was I at here? Okay. I'm going to do it this way. Oh, there it is. I got it. Ah, right. here we go. <laughs> I just stand right here. I got to hit it. I hit it. All right. Israel is still in crisis, and if you listen to all the news and saw Israel respond, but there are other signs being goody goody two shoes. That's not true. But the truth is not being told, and because the truth is not being told, the American people are being blindsided by all this. That's what we're going to talk about today. So let's do this. Let's pray for Israel. Show how wonderful is your grace, Savior of those who seek at your right hand, refuge from their foes. Protect them like the pupil of your eye. Hide them in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are selling, who are selling them from their deadly enemies who are all around them. Y'all say this with me. The church is not an audience to be entertained, but it's an army to be trained and to be empowered. Isn't God good? Give him a hand clap of praise. <laughs> These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one, except my worship. Oh, Lord, give on another hand clap of praise. Remember, worship is an act of war against the end of our hearts. Come on, let's go and hear a war cry. Come on.
in the ark. Okay? We are in the ark. Talk about saying we in the ark. Yeah, this is rain, it's rain, I know it's rain. The sparks in my backyard yesterday were singing D D D D. This morning they were singing two D two D. Amen. Yeah, it's rained a lot, but praise God, we God's in control. I haven't seen animals going by two by two yet. Alright? Look at that. Time for our time and offering. That's what's the Lord through giving. Get your offering and tithe out. And you've already put it in the plate out front and put your hand up. If you got it in your hand, put it on up. And if you don't, if you're right again, just put your hand up. Okay, let's say this together. Let's see here. Let's, here we go. Here it goes. Let's say this together. I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. I will release my hand. It will never leave my life. You will multiply it. Except my seed. Oh Lord.
groups of people, and they saw this on my arm. And he asked me, what does this stand for? And I said, oh. And I started telling them about Bethany. And I said, she told me the whole time she was sick, don't worry, Dad, either way I win. And I said, the whole time she was sick, she kept saying, God's got this. And I said, I remember the night before we took her to the hospital. She hadn't spoken since I've been there. I was in the retirement chair beside her. She said, Dad, Dad. I said, what is it? She said, I think I'm scared. And I stood up and I held her and I said, it's okay, baby. Daddy's scared too. And I prayed for her and I kissed her on the forehead and said, what have you always said? She said, God's got this. And that was her very last words. And I'm going to tell you something. That girl today is up there doing what we're talking about. Amen. Yeah, she was down here hurting that cancer. But she's not hurt anymore. And I thank God for what God does. When we leave this place, we leave all this behind. All the pressure, all the sickness, all the pain. When we get to heaven, we can only imagine what God's doing for us. Amen? It's amazing.
I'm looking for something to do. For some reason, special today, too. I cannot wait for what God is going to do. Amen. Let's get this thing moving up here. Let's see if we can switch up my goal. Which am I going here? Back and forward. Middle way, left way. way. There you go. Here we go. There we go. We've been talking about spiritual warfare and the doors. I'm not talking about the singing group, the doors. I'm talking about the doors. Amen. The doors that Satan uses to come into our life and to get us discouraged, to get us dismayed, and to just rip us apart many times without firing a shot. Amen. Without firing a shot. <clears throat> get, you, get your Bibles out. Man. We've been talking, we've been here so long, you can probably just quote this. You probably don't even need to, to look at it, but we're going to do it anyway because eventually, hopefully in the next few weeks, we're going to be going to the armor. But again, we're doing under armor, and under armor is very important. we got to have something underneath in order to, 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 to put armor on. And so that's what we're talking about. And this one's going to be a two-parter. I didn't see how in the world I can make this a one-parter uh, and keep your attention and give this justice. Amen. So get your Bible out. And turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Stand for the reading of the word. Ephesians <coughs> chapter 6. <coughs> Stand for the reading of the word. Verse 10. Same thing we've been reading the whole time. And hopefully it'll get in somebody's head. And in their heart and in their spirit. Because it's in mine. Uh, finally my brethren be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. I'm going to say that again. Finally. See, we think the spiritual warfare is all about this chapter 6, but spiritual warfare starts in Ephesians chapter 1. And it works all the way through with the relationships. Then it finally goes to family. Then it goes to marriage. And after he's doing all that, now he goes, now he's in Ephesians chapter 6. After doing all this other stuff, <clears throat> he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes, the devices, the slick thinking, the plots to bring you down of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the, <coughs> the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places, Wherefore, taking you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. Amen. God is so good. His word is so powerful. We thank you for it, God. Lord, touch Lord, us right now. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we thank you, God, that everything we do, everything we say, wherever we're at, God, you're in total, total, total control. I ask you right now, Lord, to bless us, Lord. Father, we felt your spirit, Lord, in praise and worship. Now let us continue to have that spirit of praise and worship as we go over your word. We thank you for it. We know you got it. And we're giving it to you, all of it, to you right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, amen. amen. You can be seated. On the way down, tell somebody the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. So why do you keep saying it all the time? Okay, then why do you keep telling your wife that you love her? Why, why, why do you keep telling your husband that you love them? It's because you want them to remember this. Remember this. Matter of fact, uh, we try to make it so it's one of the last words. If something ever happened to me when I'm gone, one of the last words that my wife would hear is I love you. And one of the last words I would hear if she was gone was I love you. Because we want that to be the strongest thing in our lives. And so, <clears throat> that, you know, everybody's trying to conserve energy. They're trying to conserve gas. You know, I, I do get a little chuckle when I see mopeds get in front of me, and, and especially in Washington, they get mopeds get in front, and uh, they get flying down there, and I look at them, and all I can think of is, I start singing, Born to be wild. <laughs> get your motor running. Doom, 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 doom. Get on the highway. Move that moped. <laughs> all right. A young man drove his scooter to a gas station and he dismounted off his, he dismounted. I saw a guy the other day, I kid you not, I thought he was from Hell's Angels. 
And he, he, he bumped into me at the, at, the, at the gas station. He bumped into me. I thought he was going to go out and get on a hog. And he got out and got on the moped and drove off on it. Okay. <laughs> well, this is how this is. The, 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 ga the guy pulled up to the gas station, dismounted, and said, I need a pint of gas. A pint uh -huh. of gas to the attendant. He said, I want a few ounces of oil for the motor. Certainly, sir, as the attendant said, and would you also like for me to cough into your tires? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a little bit, a little bit, okay. I got a secret for you. I'm going I'm to explain something to you. How many ever knows that sometimes your kitchen gets messy? It just gets aggravating. The secret to a clean kitchen, y'all ready? The secret to a clean kitchen is simple. Don't cook, ever. I'm going downhill fast in this thing. Okay. Never use these <laughs> again. Uh, Francis wanted me to tell you uh, that she's doing good in Texas. She uh, has got some, has hit some rough spots since she got laryngitis, and they're trying to work the chemo with her. But she's running to this amazing family that actually they said, next time you come, you let us take care of you. And so she's just the Douglas family. And the Douglas family, uh, uh, they met her at, at MD Anderson, and they said, we got you. And they've had her the whole time. And that's amazing how God sends people to you when you need them. Amen? So now, let me go and get into spiritual warfare. Okay, who will I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, send me. Again, I, I'm going to stop using this slide next week, but I just wanted to go and finish this up with these, with, with these uh, doors. Now, if we get through the doors, you won't see these anymore. Uh, does not mean take up space. It means take a stance, be productive, take back lost ground. I always remember the power behind, ahead of you is always bigger than the power uh, behind you. Here you go. Be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. And we're talking about the devil's doors. We got finished this door. It's going to be another week of this door. And then we got one more door. And then we're through with the doors. And we're going to probably, I'm not sure, but we may get to them. I'm kind of playing this by ear as we go along. I didn't go in with everything set up for me. I went in. I've been doing it as we go along. And so the devil's door. All right. And again, once the doors are done, you won't be seeing this slide anymore either. There was uh, 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 14 present at the Last Supper, Jesus, his disciples, and Satan. He was looking for a way to get to Jesus. He was looking for a doorway. Do you know that Satan right now is looking at you and he's trying to find a doorway? He's looking for it. It's amazing. You know, we walk around like we're super Christian. We walk around like we got it all together. But we don't realize that he's got it together a whole lot better than we do. And he waits and lurks like a roaring lion looking for a door. And if he gets in that door, then there's going to be problems. He tried to fake Jesus' life through a door, but he found none. Because every door was shut. So the only way to get to Jesus was to get to those close around them. Amen? Think about it. How many times have you said no, 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 no? Adam was saying no, 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 but how did Satan get to Adam? Through Eve. Think about these things. This is powerful stuff. So he goes to the disciples. They've got a dispute inside of them. Who's the greatest? And they got and who's going to do what for God? Who's going to be sitting where? And they got it also uh, uh, among them. Same thing. Uh, who's the greatest? And what's going on? You think they'd be holy, holy, holy? They were a holy, holy, but it was it was full of holes. They were full of holes because they didn't understand what God was trying to do with them. The same way, some of us in here, our walk may be a little holy right now. And I'm not talking about. Uh, uh, holy, holy, holy. I'm talking about watch out for the holes. You're going to break your leg. Our life's full of holes. Our spirituality is full of holes because we don't realize what God, although we're going through something, although our feelings get hurt, although our hearts get broken, we don't understand that God has got something special for us. So real quickly, I mean real quick, we're going to talk about the doors that we've already talked about. Number one door is fear. How do I close the door? You realize that fear comes from Satan. Fear is a choice. 
and I do not have to accept it. Do you realize that the guys in the heroin unit asked me a few weeks ago, why, what are you preaching on at church? And I said, I'm preaching on spiritual warfare. They said, what you, what you zeroing in on now? And I said, the doors of how Satan comes into your life. And those guys asked me, can you please share this with us? Very, very powerful. And last week, those, 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 those in the heroin unit, those guys had their eyes closed and they had their hands raised and tears coming down as I was talking about the doors and that door of forgiveness last week. So, so, you do not have to accept it. Fear, fear, faith, have faith in God and what he can do for you. Amen. The next door is pride. I know nobody in here has got any pride whatsoever, which is inflated self-interest. How do you get past deflated self-interest? You need to see Jesus in your reflection. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Here's your questions. You've already had them a hundred times. I'm not going to give them to you again. If you want to let me know. Uh, I was even debating whether even to show that slide. The next one is forgiveness. We talked about that the week before last. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Colossians 3, 13. So what forgiveness is, how you close the door, you just release them. You cancel the debt. It's an act of your will. First thing you got to do is you make a decision. And the second thing you got to do is go through the process. The decision is immediate. The process may take years. Okay, so don't feel bad if you made that decision, but you still don't like being around them. You got to work through the process. Okay, <clears throat> so it's truly modeling Christ. So here we go. We're getting ready to go into another door. Y'all ready for another door? Somebody say, "Open sesame." <laughs> the next door. Ready? I had door number four and door number five entirely different. And while I was preaching on forgiveness and working, I mean, I was up here preaching, and I was getting ready to make tell y'all what door number four was going to be, and I felt the Holy Spirit nudge me and said, that's not what it's going to be. So, he said, word deficit. I said, it's a mighty big word. And so here's what the Lord, I believe, really believe he gave me. Willful ignorance. Wow. You get it there, buddy. Let her rip, bro. There you go. I love it. Walter, you honestly, you light, up, you light me up when you do that. Go ahead, let her rip. Willful ignorance. Now, last week, I already had it fixed for this week. But believe it or not, God said that one enough. I got, you got, you got, to, you got, to, you got to do something different. Because last week I preached right straight from the heart, so to speak. So I broke it up into two parts and did something entirely different this week. So I'm telling you, God's working for us, through us, and with us, and on us. But we got to understand. Word deficit. Willful ignorance. What in the world is willful ignorance? You're riding down the road down 55, or you're riding down 33, and you decide you're going to ride 75, and the man Popo stops you. And you said, <laughs> he said, didn't you see that sign? You're going 75. Didn't you see that sign that said, 55? And you said, not really. I just do my own thing. He says, the way you're doing your own thing, get, let me get an autograph from you. He said, well, I didn't realize what the speed limit was. You know what he'll tell you? Willful ignorance. 
is not an excuse. Same way, God's word, get ready. Satan fears, back up there, Satan fears our discovery of God's word because our ignorance of it is the most effective weapon he can use against us. Wow. Wow. That's a powerful statement. I got to read it again. Satan fears our discovery of God's word because our, uh, because our ignorance of it is the most effective weapon he can use against us. God's word is our greatest wonder. God's word is our greatest weapon. <coughs> God's word is our greatest wisdom. But if we don't know the word... All we do is wonder. As in, what happened? But once you get to read his word, now it's a different kind of wonder. That's why Satan's trying so hard to prevent. He's trying to destroy. And he's trying to twist God's word, which is going on a lot nowadays, especially nowadays with people that are trying to make the Bible say things that it does not say. They're trying to make excuses. They're trying to align the word of God up with their sin. And when they line the word of God up with their sin so they can feel better about it, wow. Adam and Eve, I'll talk about it in just a minute. But there was some willful ignorance going in there, and it's going to amaze you how the willful ignorance happened. So now, you'll never know how big a threat you are to Satan until you begin to read the Bible and do what it says. We got this from Benny to start with, and I found a place, and I called him or, and I, I, or emailed him, and I said, I need these books, and we got some in here, somebody wants one. <coughs> we got these little brown books <coughs> that takes all four Gospels, <coughs> and it puts them together, and it makes it into a cohesive story. I carry these books to every place I minister, and I started passing them out. <clears throat> and some folks told me, said, they never knew that much about Jesus until they started reading that book. And once they started reading that book where it mixed the Gospels together, then it said, they said, now we want to know more about the Bible. Tell us how to study the Bible because we're realizing what we've been missing out on and the power that is present with God's Word. So, the divine origin of God's word. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. You know, Matthew, Mark, or Matthew and, and Luke talk about the nativity. Mark, he's just trying to get it done. Because he's writing to Gentiles. But as John starts looking at Jesus' nativity, he goes... I think you can go ahead and do it a whole lot better or a whole lot more. Leaving out something. You're leaving out something. I'm going to I'm I'm fill the blanks in. And so instead of the nativity, <clears throat> he says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. And he emphasized the eternal nature of God's Word. It's intimate connection to the very being of God. The word is not merely a collection of teachings. The word is not merely a book of stories, but it is the very essence of who God is. As such, the power of God's word is rooted in the power of God Himself, which is infinite, eternal, and unchanging. Let me give you a little bit of Bible basics right here. The Bible consists of 66 books, smaller books, but they're, they're continuous. They've got a congruent story of God's plan of salvation. Uh, and the books follow the order found in the Latin Vulgate, in the, in, in the Old Testament historic, uh, poetic and prophetic books, the New Testament, in the, in the Gospels, the history books, the letters, the prophet book of revelation 
Revelation is the book of God's revealed truth written to all, written in, to all people while God's self-closure of his will and his works and his ways. People say, God hadn't talked to me in quite a while. If you've opened that Bible, he's talked to you. If you haven't heard God in a while, try reading his word. Because I promise you, if you get serious about that word, you will hear God talk to you. Because your reading is like reading a letter from God. He has talked about it. The Bible is authored by God himself. It was written by more than 40 men who were inspired by God's spirit to write it. They came from all walks of life. They saw things that we could only hope to see. It was written in three different languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. It was written in three continents, Asia, Africa, Europe. Can you imagine? It took approximately 1,500 to 1,600 years to write the Word of God. And look at how it goes along. You and I can see an accident and talk about it. And you'll see something different than me. We can watch a show. We sitting there together and watch a show. And we'll talk about it. And I go, I didn't see that. Well, I will, you should have been looking. Well, how about this? But you get all these people together, 40 people over 1,600 years, and they match it up, 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 up. Because the Holy Ghost had inspired them. It addresses theology, history, science. The origin of the universe and life, the nature of God, the nature of sin, the plan of human redemption, the future. The Bible contains one central theme, theme, and that is salvation through faith in Jesus. So now, this is a very powerful book. Very powerful book. But there's a problem. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, <coughs> not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Wow. Of hearing, a famine of hearing the word of the words of the Lord. That's the day that we're living in. I remember looking, and now you look places, and they got churches starting up everywhere, and they got them char- starting up in theaters and stores and all kinds of stuff, all this fancy stuff. But I remember when we were trying to start a church, and we were trying to use the community building for just long enough till we could get a building, and they said, We are not going to allow. A church to be in a community building. You got to do better than that. Find you someplace else. Today, turn on the TV, stay on the news for 15 minutes, and you'll see the Word of God is in famine. All the things people are pushing, all the things people are protesting against, all these things, not everything, but most. Absolutely, positively, go against the Word of God. So instead of comparing sin to the Word and annihilating the sin... They take the sin and compare the word and maneuver the word to match the sin in order that they can be comfortable in their dysfunction. We're in that time. The Bible says in the New Living Translation, The time is surely coming, says the Sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and wander from border to border searching for the word of the Lord but they will not find it. The CEV says, I the Lord also promise you a terrible shortage but not a food of water. You will hunger and thirst to hear my message. You will search everywhere from north, north to south, from east to west. You will go over the earth seeking a message from me, the Lord. 
but you won't find one. Amos 11 and 10. And I promise you, the famine is here. Every week, I get to see all kinds of people, all walks of life, and I can start mentioning the Word of God. And they go, oh, yeah, 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 I got that, I know that. And I'll say, well, okay, well, tell me about it. <laughs> I'm going to start telling you about it. I go, I'm not sure you're reading the same book I'm reading. Because I haven't read what you read. I don't see what you see. But they say, well, Grandma used to say that. Grandma said that Granddaddy said that. Granddaddy said that his daddy said that. And I said, but what about what does God say? Oh, well, that's different. I see it and I hear it all the time. Satan's target is your mind. Satan's weapon is lies. Satan's purpose is to make you ignorant of God's will. Your defense is the inspired word of God. That's it. Adam and Eve in the garden. God already told Adam, you can have anything in here, anything you want, but stay away from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day you eat it, you're going to die. And the Hebrew means you're going to start to die. Death will be introduced into life. Death will be introduced into this world. <clears throat> he told Eve, and the Bible says, there they were by the tree, and Satan twisted God's word, twisted it, and told Eve God was jealous and just didn't want it to be like him. And there was going to be something amazing. And as I said, she ate it, and she turned, and she gave it to Adam. Shouldn't have Adam straightened out the twisted lies? Shouldn't Adam have said, wait a minute, I'm the priest of my home. We're not going to allow this word to be perverted like this and twisted. We know what the word of God says. He said that if I eat it, then, I'll, then I will begin to surely die. So God's word was twisted. And really, you can't really blame Eve as much as you can blame Adam. We blame Eve, we blame Eve, we blame Eve, we blame Eve. But the truth is, why didn't Adam say something? Because he heard it straight from God's mouth. Eve was going on what Adam had told her. So the twisted truth... Instead of blaming Eve, go ahead and blame Adam. Secondly, the Bible says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I will also reject you from, from being a priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. Hosea 4 and 6. Let's read another version of that. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ready? Ready? My people are being destroyed. It don't mean that it's going to happen. It means it's happening right now. Present tense is happening right now. My people are being destroyed because they do not know me. Our world is on a collision course with evil. We need to get back to the word. But because the word has been taken out of schools, the word has been taken out of the courtrooms, the word has been taken out of so many places, people don't know them. And instead, they're going for the twisted word. And all chaos, literally all hell, is breaking loose. And it's because there's a famine in the land. If there's a normal famine in the land, you see death and destruction. And you see all these people walk around with 
can hardly move because they're so hungry. Can you imagine spiritually the famine, what we got going on? We got a lot of death and destruction. And we got a lot of people that can barely, barely move. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. Here's the first thing about God's word. Matter of fact, this is what God shared with me last week. I've already fixed the sermon. The first thing God's word is, is a, fret, a breath of fresh air. Fresh spiritual air. 2 Timothy 3.16 3, says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Let's break our own down. The Amplified Version. Every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration. It comes out of his mouth. God-breathed. And profitable for instruction, for reproof, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline in obedience, and for training in righteousness and holy living in conformity to God's will in thought, purpose, and action. It's a fresh breath. Just look at that. I ain't got to say anything. Just look at it. I hear all the time that God's word is outdated. That's not relevant. And that's usually the people that are trying to adapt the word of God to give their sin the green light. Did God really mean that? Well, that's Old Testament. That didn't count. Did God really mean this? Well, maybe God, look at that. The way, there's a mistake. God, did God really mean that? And all along, all they're doing is trying to make it so it fits their sin and say everything is okay. Here's my answer. Really? Really? You're going to take God's word, twist it, and make it say it's okay for whatever you want to do just so you can feel good and comfortable in your sin. Whoa. It's crazy. It's amazing. When you look at God's word, first it says it's quick. Hebrews says it's quick. That word quick means living. It means active. It means life giving. And that word powerful in the Greek, the word is energos, which is where we get the word energy. And it's eternal energy. It's so amazing. I remember going in the very first time going into Pitt Detention Center years ago, 20 something years ago. And some of those guys were so big and they were so bad acting and they were talking junk and cussing and carrying on. And the very first couple times, the first couple times I went, I'm thinking, if I made a mistake here, but every time, every time, I said, who wants some of this? And I had the word in my hand. And I would go sit at the table and a handful would sit at the table. But I noticed that all around that table were people that act like they weren't even listening. I look around and be going. But I go back and start talking and I see and they're watching and they're listening. You know why? Because what they were listening to got them in there. What they were listening to was ruining their lives. But once you start speaking the word, the word is like, like I remember we talked about a few weeks ago. You don't have to defend the word. The word is like a lion. You just turn it out of the cage. It will defend itself. And it's amazing how you can bring that word out. And how it changes people's minds. 
in their lives and to make something special happen. That's why the enemy doesn't want us to speak the word. Matter of fact, when we speak the word of God, uh, word of God in any situation we're in, anyone, we speak fresh, living energy into a situation to heal, to change, or to empower. God's word is so powerful, and we can be assured that it never will return empty. So first, fresh air. Fresh. It's not old. It's not stale. It's good stuff. The next one is, look at this. The Bible is meant to be bread for daily use, not cake for special occasions. You ever watch any of these John Wayne movies? Some of these cowboy movies? And they're riding through, pushing the cattle through. I was watching Red River the other night. They were mean. They were ruthless. They were shooting each other. And one of them get run over by a cow or one of them get shot. And they go and say, bury him. We'll go read over him in the morning. And they pull out the word of God. And they read, naked I came from mother's womb, naked I will return. You know, and then they close up the book. Everybody's got their hat off. Then they go back shooting and killing and riding. It's the truth. And I think that's got to be the silliest thing. <laughs> then, then I see it happening in front of me. I'm not talking about y'all. Y'all guys, y'all guys are top notch. I'm talking about out there. I see it. And it drives me bonkers. God's word is bread. We're going to talk about this later in the series, later next week. But right now, I'm just going to get it started. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I give him, which give for the life of the world, is my flesh. He's the living word, but he speaks the word. The living word speaks the word, and when the word was put down, then it becomes the logos. The living word becomes the word. He became flesh and dwelt among us. People need more than bread, need more than bread for their life. They must feast on every word of the Lord. Jesus. While he was being tempted in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, he was tempted the whole time with the last three temptations. <clears throat> he said, Satan said, I know you're hungry. Make these stones bread. And he said, ah. He said, people need more than bread for their life. They need to feast on the word of God. Wow. Matter of fact, think about it this way. The word of the, the, God's word brings life in the world full of death. Speak it. Shout it. And serve it. Cut off the thing, serve it, so it's in serve it. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, and who the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. At least they see the light of this glorious gospel. Let's take it a little deeper here. But even for our gospel, the glad tidings also be hidden, <clears throat> obscured, or covered up with a veil that hinders the knowledge of God, which is what's happening now in this world. I have people argue with me. I mean, argue. Well, stand me down and argue. And I go, the Word of God don't say that. The Word of God says you can't leave that alone. 
And it'll stand me down because somebody has twisted it and perverted it and made them feel good in their sin. Then when they get the real word, they can't stand it and they get angry. And they want to fight. Because now you're meddling. And all you do is just reading the, the word of God. It is hidden only to those who are perishing and obscured only to those who are spiritually dry, dry, dying and veiled only to those and only to those who were lost. For the God of this world hath blinded the unbelieving minds that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the glory, gospel of the glory of Christ, the Messiah, who is made in the image and likeness of God. You and I, we're the light. We're a city on a hill that cannot be hid. Jesus said, Greater works will you do because I go to the Father. doesn't mean that we're going to do anything greater in, in quality, but greater in magnitude. Think about it. I've gone into places just recently. Sometimes they knew who I was, sometimes they didn't. But I go into places and they're talking so bad and they're cutting up so, so bad. And sometimes without them knowing I'm a, man, a pastor, I just walk in and they go, I'm sorry, sir. Excuse me. And I go, why you ask me to excuse you? I said, because we see God on you. Same happens to y'all. You might not know it, but it happens because the Bible says our spirit will bear spirit with others. I was talking to somebody the other day. And I'm not, I'm not pinning, any, no, pinning nothing on me. This is nothing. I'm pinning no medals on me at all. This is not about me. It's about him. <clears throat> I was talking to a guy the other day. And it had been about the second or third time I talked to him. And he told me, he said, something's got to change. And I said, well, you got the key in your hand. You got the key. And he said, will you help me? I said, I'll help you. <clears throat> and that day, his life changed tremendously in all kinds of ways. And I happened to see him again a few days later. And I said, how's it going? He said, it's better than it's ever been. He said, I want to thank you for something. And I said, thank me for what? He said, for that conversation we had the other day. He said, man, he said, there was something different about the conversation. And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about, buddy. And he goes, well, I've heard other ministers and heard other people. And there's a lot of them out there. I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not a, not a, Meddle on me at all. I'm just telling you for the circumstance at the moment. He said, I've heard other people that claim they're Christians. He said, but that day, I thought I was a dead man. That day, I thought it was over. And he said, when you started talking to me, he said, although the words were coming out of your mouth, he said, the power of God was wrapped around those words and when it hit my heart he said it exploded in my spirit I haven't heard the word of God like that before and I thank you I said it was God's word did all the work I didn't he said yeah, but I just want to thank you for being a willing vessel exploded in his spirit People don't need there, 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 child. There, there, there. Poor, 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 pitiful. No, they need to hear the word 
of God. They need to hear how they can get out of the mess and out of the distress. And it always ends and it always starts with the power of of the Word of God. We got more to go for this. This is just a, you could say, the starting of it. This is the introduction to it. But this week, I want you to think about God's Word as a fresh breath of air. Try it with yourself first. When all of a sudden you're hearing doubt, and you're hearing pain and you're hearing discomfort in your own self or you're hearing it somewhere else. I don't mean beat people up with the word. But as God opens the door, speak the word. Speak it. Speak it. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the spoken word of God. Speak it. You say, oh, well, it's my problem. When I speak it, my ears hear it and my words become the spoken word of God and it goes out of my mouth into my ears down to my heart try it there's nothing on this earth like the word of all mighty God DC come on up here buddy play something This week, make it a point. If you have to, write down a few verses and just keep it in your pocketbook or in your wallet or somewhere. And we keep reciting them and reciting them until you get them down. And when you get into certain situations, instead of speaking doubt and hate and junk, learn to speak the Word and watch what the Word will do. I'm not here to tell you that it's going to change everything and it's all going to be hunky-dory. Every time it's ever going to leave. No, I'm telling you it's going to give somebody strength to go through what they're going through. It's going to give you strength to go through what you're going through. God never promised to take all of our problems away, but he promised to be with them through the problem. Everybody stand. God's Word, there's nothing like it. When I first started preaching, I thought once I spoke on a subject, that was it. I had to find another subject. I remember preaching on David and Goliath. And I thought, that's it. I won't preach on him anymore. And then I started learning. I can focus on just one part of that story, one word of that story. And I may preach on the same verse 25, 30 times, but just focus on a different aspect or verse or, I mean, word. And it bring an entirely different message. God is here in a very real way. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no looking around. God has us in a very, very, very powerful and grip. God wants to do something with us that we cannot even imagine. But we got to be ready for it. We got to be ready for what God's got for us. Be ready for what God wants to do with us.
Every head bowed, every eye closed. God said he would be with us. He would walk with us. When we walk through the fire, we shall not be burnt. When we walk through the water, it shall not overcome us. One of those words for water is literally cesspool. You may be here tonight or today and your situation stinks. I mean stinks. Isaiah 43, let me read this for you. Isaiah 43. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee. This is what I'm talking about by speaking into people's lives the word. The Lord who created thee, O Jacob, who that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Again, water, cesspool. Your life at this moment may be sour. You may even feel like you're going through a cesspool. Everything around you seems to be stinking. And sometimes even including your thinking. God didn't say that you wouldn't go through these. He said he'd be with us. And they would not take us down. He said, the Lord said, O Jacob, I created thee. O Israel, I formed thee. Jacob had problems. But God formed him through the fire to be Israel, a prince. Today, I want you to know that God's got you. He's not going to let go. You're okay. Yes, it stinks. The better days are coming. It will not take you down. With every head bowed, every eye closed. The first thing I'm going to ask is if I'm talking to you right now about the life just starts to stink. Nobody's looking. Nobody can see you. Just me. If I'm talking to you. Can you put that hand up? Things have just gotten kind of stinky. You don't know how to handle it. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Let them know, God, that you're with them. And that it's not going to take them down. They're not going to overflow them. They're not going to put so much on them that they can't handle it and when the fire comes it will not burn them to the ground bless them right now God let them realize again no weapon formed against them is going to prosper I thank you for peace your word said you would keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Again, there's the word, there's the word, there's the word. That's not my promises, that's God's promises. And right now, I believe God is speaking peace all over this place. And I thank you for that peace. I thank you for that power. And I thank you for that anointing. I ask you right now, God, to minister to everybody in this place. Let them know that you hadn't let go. That you're there all the way with them. And if they would just turn and look to one side or the other, there you are.
When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got thrown in the fire, the king was astonished because they, number one, didn't die. Number two, there was a fourth man. Jesus was walking around there with him. Jesus is walking with you now. Hold on to it and trust it. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give this day to you. We give this afternoon to you. God, we give our lives to you. We give our problems to you. We give you, Lord, all the things that we're going through. Things that we never thought would happen. Things that we never experienced before. Things that we never thought would ever come to our door. We did all right. We did everything. We crossed every, uh, dotted every eye, crossed every T. But still, the pain came. And Satan wants to twist the truth and make us feel like we've lost out. We haven't. The word says many are the affliction of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. doesn't mean that he won't, won't take the affliction away, but he'll take you. You will be protected in the midst of that affliction. He's got you. He's got you. He's got you. This week, speak that fresh breath that fresh breath of God. Speak that fresh breath to your circumstances and to other circumstances and watch what God's going to do for you and for everybody you're around. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, bless everybody here. Lord, if they need a closer walk, give it. If they need to study that word more, help them do it. Show them. Help them. Cleanse them. Use them. In a very powerful way this week. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Everybody just raise your hands and just thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit's ministering in here. Let him minister. Thank you, God. Touch us all. We thank you for the peace. We thank you for the comfort. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for that fresh breath of air and for that bread to sustain us. Like the manna in the wilderness, we thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory. Glory to the Lamb of God. Now, Brother, Brother Steve, after... We say the Lord's Prayer, Brother C is going to dismiss us in prayer. All right, let's go. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not an attempt to deliver us from evil. 